So we're going to solve a few more trigonometric equations by looking at them in a number of ways. So we have this tan of x equals negative 1 over root 3. All right, so first thing we're going to do is solve the equation. So I'm going to start by dividing by the square root of 3 on both sides. And so this gives us that the tangent of x is going to be negative 1 over the square root of 3. Right? Um, now that's isolated. And it's a little bit tougher for us to use the unit circle to be able to solve um, these. So one thing I would, again, very strongly recommend, and we should have done this in the previous section, but just in case we didn't, we really should have a table memorized, okay, um, where we have a number of angles, okay, so we have angles, and then we might have like the tangent of special angles, like zero, and then pi thirds, and then pi fourths, and then pi third, or sorry, pi six, first of all, pi fourths, pi thirds, and then pi halves, all right? If you don't have this memorized, you should absolutely memorize this, okay? So tan of zero is zero. Um, this would be root three over three. This is one. This is square root of three. And this is undefined. And the reason I tell you to memorize these is because these are going to come up very frequently for us, okay? So the sooner you have these memorized, the better, okay? And the same with the sine and the cosine functions for these. Um, I've, seen, I've showed you these in previous videos. So if you don't have these memorized, what you should do is make sure that you have all of this for sine and cosine somewhere as well for all of these angles okay? and have those memorized. Okay, Just in case you forgot, sine of 0 is 0, sine of pi 6 is a half, root 2 over 2, root 3 over 2, and 1. And then for cosine, it's 1, root 3 over 2, root 2 over 2, 1 half, and 0. Okay, So um, memorize this. Okay, This will make your lives a lot easier, okay? Um, and also, um, going forward in the videos, I'm gonna expect that folks have these memorized, okay? All right, so if we look up here, um, I want you to notice that we don't have anywhere negative one over root three, or even root three over uh, three. But what we could do is we could rationalize, okay? So one of the techniques that we've seen throughout the semester is multiplying by the denominator, root three over three, and this is gonna be equal to negative root three over three, All right? So our solution, okay, or one solution is going to be pi six, okay? And it would be actually negative pi six, okay? So one solution is gonna be negative pi six, okay? Um, or a coterminal angle is going to be 11 pi six, okay? And all I did to get there was I added two pi, okay? And remember, the question asks us to be able to find between zero and two pi, okay? So one of our solutions is going to be 11 pi over six, okay? Another angle is the other quadrant where the, where the cosine function is going to be negative, and then we have to find the reference angle, okay? So really, we're using pi six, okay? And so remember, we have all students take calculus. And so we know that the cosine function is negative in this quadrant and the tangent is negative in this quadrant. So we went down here and this was the reference angle to pi six or 30 degrees, okay? And then over here, the reference angle, okay? So we have these reference angles. Remember, this is gonna be five pi six, okay? So the other angle we would have is x equal five pi six, okay? So that's probably the way we wanna do this. Um, once we have these memorized, then we can just use the reference angles based on the sign, S-I-G-N, of the trig function. Right? Now, if we wanna go through and find what the coterminal angles are going to be, and this one's kind of sneaky. So we would say x is gonna be equal to 11 pi six plus pi n, and also x is equal to five pi six plus pi n. But I want you to notice in this particular example that the angle that really separates these is already pi, okay? So if for some reason, so think about this, if I was to add like a pi to five pi six, okay? So just as a, an example of this, if I took five pi six and added pi, which is the same thing as five pi six plus six pi six by getting a common denominator, that would be 11 pi six. 
And so really, these two answers are duplicates, okay? Because every time I would eventually, if I plugged in the right number for n, I would just fig I would just eventually end up at the same angle, all right? Now, this doesn't always work, okay? So the only time that you would only pick one of these, okay? So this would be our answer, by the way, because um, these are gonna, these would represent the exact same answers for all of these. But if you look at this, and you basically get an 80 degree angle that exists between these two, okay, from here to here, okay, that means that you just need one of them, okay? But there might be times where you don't get that, okay? So I would just strongly advise you to draw this out, okay, so you can kind of see. All right, now we want to verify this, okay? So we should get 11 pi 6 and 5 pi 6. So graphically, I'm going to verify this by just going through my calculator. I'm going to plot the tangent of x. And remember, there's a lot of asymptotes. Okay. And then I'm going to graph y equals 1 over the square root of 3. All right. Now, here's our two solutions. We have 1 at pi 6, and we have 1 at 7 pi 6. Okay. So that's going to be our other solution here. Um, and if we look back over here, we had 5 pi 6. So did I put the negative in there? Um, I may not have, so let me go back and check. Nope, I didn't put the negative in there. And here's one solution, which is 5 pi 6. So that's good. And there's 11 pi 6. Okay, so that's how we would verify our solution on 0 to 2 pi. Of course, there's other solutions to this. But we don't really don't care about those. Okay. One last thing we would do is in our graphing calculators or scientific calculators, we could just find the inverse tangent. So we would say something to the effect of tan minus 1 of 1 over square root of 3, or negative 1 over root 3. For some reason, I really don't want that negative in there. Okay, so 1 divided by square root of 3. All right, and this is where we'd have to add 2 pi. Okay, so we would just take this answer, all right, and we would add 2 pi or pi to it. Um, now, notice if I add 2 pi, and then I type in 11 pi over 6, okay, that's the same exact value, okay? So that's how we get one of those. Uh, the other one that I would get is when I added pi to this value, okay? So if I added pi to this, and this again, this is how I check this numerically, okay? And then that should be the same as the answer 5 pi over 6, all right, which it is, okay? So... Again, checking numerically, you have to make sure that you add those reference angles to make sure, um, or actually the pi or two pi or whatever it might be to make sure that you get the, to check these answers, okay? So our two answers, um, if I was to ask numerically, 2.62, okay? So for part D, okay, numerically, X would be approximately 2.62, and X would be approximately 5.62. Uh, in the scientific calculator, 5.76, okay? And again, remember, this is the one that is 5 pi 6. This is the other one that is 11 pi 6, okay? All right, um, another sneaky one we have here is the cosecant, th root 3 cosecants of minus 2 equals 0, all right? So initially, this looks like a really tough problem because the cosecant, okay? Let's add two to both sides, all right? So we get root three cosecant of theta is gonna be equal to two. Let's divide by the square root of three. So that's gonna give us that the cosecant of theta is equal to two over root three. And it's really tough for us to work with cosecants, but let's take the reciprocal, okay? And we know that the reciprocal of cosecant is the sine of theta. And then if I take the reciprocal of one side, I have to take the reciprocal of the other. So for these co-functions like cosecant, cotangent, or even secant, you just take the reciprocal of both sides. This would be root 3 over 2. And remember that the sine function is the y-coordinate in the unit circle, or we just have it memorized. So we should go back up, and we have this table memorized. The sine of root 3 over 2 would be or sorry, the sine of theta that gives us root three over two is gonna be pi thirds. So one answer for theta 
is going to be pi thirds. Okay, so this is part A. And then we need another angle. We have all students take calculus, sign is positive. Okay, so we're looking at these two quadrants. Okay, so right here we have this angle, which is pi thirds. Over here, we need the reference angle. Okay, and this would be pi minus pi thirds, which would be two pi thirds. Okay, or we could just look in the unit circle. Okay, and we would look for the root three over two. Okay, which is right here at two pi thirds on the y coordinate. Okay, so um, again, another answer would be our two pi thirds, right? Um, what we would also do is we would just add two pi n, okay? So our all answers would be pi thirds plus two pi n and two pi thirds plus two pi n, all right? And by the way, when you do your homework and also on the examinations, this is most likely the answer that I'm going to look for, unless I specifically say that I only want it between zero and two pi, all right? If I ask for all the solutions, okay, that's where you have to add the two pi n, okay? Um, and of course, we have to remember that n is an element of the integers. Graphically, I'm just going to plot the cosecant function, and then I'm going to plot two over root three, and I'm going to see where they intersect, okay? So in our graphing calculator, let me just change this to cosecant. And this is going to become 2 over root 3. Not 5 over root 3, 2 over root 3. Um, and we notice that, now remember, this is outside the domain over here, right? So these are going to be our two solutions. So one of them is right here at pi third and then 2 pi thirds, okay? So that's how we can verify our solution numerically. In our calculators, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to find sine minus 1 of root 3 over 2, okay? Because our calculators most often don't have an inverse cosecant, okay? So in our graph, in our scientific calculators, okay, clear this, we're going to have the inverse sine of square root of 3 over 2, all right? And that's 1.04. Okay, so one solution would be when theta is approximately 1.04. And then we have to find the reference angle. Okay, so we would just take and subtract 1.04 from pi, okay, to be able to find this other reference angle. Okay, so um, I'll call this like theta sub 1. Theta sub 2 is going to be equal to pi minus 1.04. And again, that's because it lives in quadrant 2 and we're looking for this coterminal angle. We're just checking this. So in our calculators, I'm going to take pi minus 1.047, oh, 97551. All right, I get 2.09. If I want to check these, I have pi over 3, which is going to be this answer. That works. And then 2 pi over 3, which is going to be this answer. We're just off by like maybe... Uh, 10 millionth or something like that, okay? So, and that's okay. Remember, we're just checking these answers numerically just to make sure that they make sense, okay? So the other angle, theta, would be 2.09, all right? Uh, radians, okay? All right, so we have one more example of some really basic sorts of trig functions, and then we're gonna start looking at, our trig equations, excuse me, then we'll start taking a look at tougher ones. Um, in general, folks, trig equations aren't easy. There's a lot that go into them, okay? So um, a good suggestion might be to go back through the first three examples that we worked through and make sure that you're confident with those before we move on, okay? Especially with these reference angles and especially with this table, okay? Memorize this table, okay? It's very, very helpful for you to be able to go through and memorize this rather than going into the unit circle every single time and trying to figure out, um, you know, what these angles are going to be.